I'm your host, Yana Tarili, born and raised in New York City. I'm a fitness and health advocate, food and people lover, and I like to travel every chance I get. So be sure to join me every week as I sail the Mediterranean Blue. Traditional Greek products, straight to your door. Yelenis.com She must find a boat and sail in it, no guarantee of shore, only a conviction that what she wanted could exist, if she dared to find it. The wind is in my sails and as I breathe in the fresh sea air, exhilaration begins to set in. My sailing odyssey kicks off as I set sail for Rhodes. Part of my family comes from the island of Rhodes and I'm very excited to be going back to my roots. I spent many childhood summers in Rhodes, but it's been quite a while since I've been back. Fresh off the boat, I can't wait to explore the island. Rhodes is the administrative capital and largest of the Dodecanese Islands. Inhabited since about 4000 BC, Rhodes has a long history of cultures, architectures, and languages. The city of Rhodes was formed in 408 BC by combining the towns of Lindos, Camiros, and Ialisos. This alliance ushered in three centuries of prosperity for the island because of its sea routes at the crossroads of Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. This prosperity was considered the golden age of Rhodes and continued until the Roman times. Various people have lived here, conquered the island and prospered. If you travel to Rhodes by yacht, you'll most likely arrive at Mandraki's Old Harbor, one of the three harbors of Rhodes. It is the only yacht harbor on the island and was the main harbor of Rhodes for almost 2,500 years. Mandraki Harbor is distinguishable by its three windmills, fortifications, and pillars. Much of what is called the new city of Rhodes can be found on the western side of the Mandraki Harbor and was built by Mussolini. The Tower of St. Nicholas at the end of the pier was built in the 15th century and was paramount to the defense of the city in some of the most ferocious battles that took place in 1480 and again in 1522. Entrance of the harbor is guarded by two deer, a male and a female, atop pillars built by the Italians in remembrance of the deer they brought to the island to eradicate the island of snakes. 
Rhodes Harbor used to be home to a giant statue, the Colossus of Rhodes. It was an impressive achievement standing almost 100 feet high. There is no question as to why it was made the hit list of the seven wonders of the ancient world. This is amazing. From here I can see the impressive old city walls, towers, bastions and battlements. And from behind I can see the domes and minarets of the Ottoman mosques. It's pure magic. But it's time to leave the old port and stroll around the modern, contemporary, vibrant city of Rhodes. Located near the harbor is the Agora, where the old fish market was once located. The Italian architect Floresanto de Fausto, who is also considered the father of Italian roads, built the Agora during the Italian period. It was the perfect opportunity to buy some gifts to bring back home, to shop for me of course, and to grab a quick snack. It's time for a coffee break, and lucky for me, Kuko's traditional cafe is right here. This is an authentic Greek cafe, or cafe neo in Greek. A place where Greeks gather and time slows down. The unfiltered Greek coffee grounds are brewed in a traditional copper briki over hot sand and watch carefully. It definitely takes patience, but it is well worth the wait. It was obvious that music is a big part of the cafe owner's life as traditional rebetica music was playing in the background. The wood-burning oven prepares all sorts of delicious Greek desserts from its earth daily. Today, I'll be enjoying bugatza, a cream custard sweet pie in a phyllo crust sprinkled with powdered sugar and cinnamon. The sugar rush was definitely worth it. Oh, Yasu! Oh my god. <laughs> These are traditional, thank you, Christopher. Traditional Greek coffee, yummy, amazing, and traditional Greek desserts. Rhodes is known by two names, the Emerald Island for its rich flora and the Island of the Knights. The medieval town and city of Rhodes has been declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1988. And this is the entrance to the medieval town, which is the oldest inhabited medieval town in all of Europe. The Street of the Knights is one of the most historical streets in the city and leads you to the Palace of the Grand Master. My imagination transported me back to medieval times as I walked this grand street, mesmerized by the tall buildings where the knights once lived, prayed, and trained. The medieval city is designated as Upper Old Town and Lower Old Town. Upper Old Town with the Palace of the Grand Masters, the Great Hospital and the Street of the Knights is an incredible example of Gothic architecture. 
In the lower old town, mosques, public baths, and other buildings from the Ottoman period seamlessly coexist with Gothic architecture. Pagliapoli is a vivid neighborhood where more than 6,000 people live and work in the exact same buildings which were inhabited by the Knights of St. John more than 600 years ago. A rare mix of ancient and modern architecture most heavily influenced by the Knights of St. John and the Ottoman periods can be found throughout the medieval town of Rhodes. The Order of Knights of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem captured Rhodes in 1307 and remained on the island for the next two centuries. The Knights successfully defended the island against invasions for over 200 years, but were finally defeated by the Ottomans in 1522. Walking through the medieval town is like being immersed in an open-air museum. Every street, building, and square conjures an imagination about the city's ancient times. Oh my God, real knights in shining armor. Are you on your way to the palace of the Grand Master? Yes, milady. May I join you? Of course, milady. Onwards. The Palace of the Grand Master is found at the end of the Street of the Knights. The palace, with its round towers and arched gate, was home to the governor and administrative center during medieval times. And now we're with the director of the Living History Festival, which happens here in Rodos every year. Tell us about it. Yes, it's a festival that reenacts the everyday life and uh, legendary events of the medieval times. It's very important because uh, it helps for the conservation of the cultural heritage of Rhodes. And how many people come? There's a lot of tourism this time of year. Yes, thousands of tourists attend the festival. And we have many uh, artists who take part and also volunteers, hundreds of volunteers taking part in this festival. Tell me some of the things that take place during the festival. Yes, uh, at first all participants should be dressed in a medieval costume, as you see. Yes. Try to use uh, stories of the past, of the medieval times. These actors are dressed in medieval yes. apparel. This is a very good way to narrate the history of Rhodes to the local community and also to the tourists. They have a very good time, they enjoy uh, themselves here and then they learn the history through the events. That's wonderful. Yes. Faliraki is a popular tourist destination in Rhodes, but I've set my sights on a lesser known destination. I've heard so much about Anthony Quinn's Bay. We really have to check it out. In 1960, Hollywood descended on Rhodes and brought some of its A-list stars along for the ride. Anthony Quinn Bay is located about two miles from Faliraki and is amongst the most stunning and popular of the island's beaches. The water is so crystal clear, it seems as if you're suspended in air. Anthony Quinn fell in love with this isolated beach and the people of Rhodes while filming The Guns of Navarone and purchased the property with dreams of creating an international center for artists. But unfortunately, the government annulled the purchase of the bay. However, it still bears the actor's name. Anthony Quinn was so disappointed with the government that he never returned to the bay that still bears his name. 
His last trip to Greece was shortly before his death in 2001, when he went to Crete to film Zorba the Greek and never mentioned Rhodes again. The deep blue waters of the Aegean evolve into the emerald green waters of the bay with its natural stone surfaces and forested cliffs. I love the sand and the pebbles and I can't believe the color of the water. It is so crystal clear. No wonder they do scuba diving and snorkeling around here. It's really famous. There is a stairway leading down to the beach, which looks quite narrow, but I think it's worth the trek. My exploration of the island of Rhodes continues, and today I set sail for the town of Lindos. Located about 27 nautical miles south of the town of Rhodes, Lindos lies on the east coast of the island. Founded by the Dorians in the 10th century BC, its location made it a meeting place between the Greeks and the Phoenicians. By the 8th century BC, Lindos was a major trading center. Cleovulos, one of the seven sages of Greece, ruled this land in the 6th century BC, but it's most famous for his saying, Pan Metron Ariston, translated, moderation is best in all things. Unfortunately, the importance of Lindos declined after the city of Rhodes was founded in the 5th century BC. Ayos Pablos Beach is located just 15 minutes from the town of Lindos and owes its name to the small church that's located there. The beach is small with green crystal clear water, golden sand and small pebbles. The beach of Ayos Pablos is truly breathtaking and no one should leave this place without trying scuba diving. As beautiful as the beaches have been above water, I'm eager to dive in and check out the underwater life. I've never dived before. And at first I was a little panicked at the thought of breathing underwater, but my instructor was patient with me and I'm so glad I went ahead and took the plunge. The silence was a little overwhelming and all I could hear was the sound of my own breathing. Coral reefs and sea colonies surrounded me as I followed small groups of fish to see where they were going. It felt like I had escaped to another world and the underwater scenery was an experience like no other. Rhodes is a scuba diver's paradise with endless secluded coves and beaches, but Greece overall is a great scuba diving destination with over 6,000 islands and islets to explore. Back on solid ground, it was time to head to my next destination. One of the main highlights of Lindos is its very own Acropolis. A natural citadel, the Lindos Acropolis has been fortified throughout the centuries by the Greeks, Romans, Byzantines, Knights of St. John, and the Ottomans. More than 600,000 people visit the archaeological site and citadel of Lindos every year. The propylae, or the gateways, were built in the same style as the Athenian propylae, 
of an open-air courtyard and a small Doric temple of Athena. Lindos is a small quaint town and is home to approximately 700 residents. Winding paths of cobblestone streets between traditional whitewashed buildings make up this charming village that sits below the Acropolis. Today, Mykonos is known as a jet-setting destination for Greece, but a selected few of the who's who had Lindos and Mavrikos restaurant on their social radar before Mykonos was discovered. We've come to Mavrikos restaurant. This restaurant is special because it insists on traditional Greek cuisine. Let's meet the owner. Nelson Rockefeller, Jacqueline Kennedy, Onassis, and even members of Pink Floyd have eaten at Mavrikos. Various awards and even an article by the New York Times adorn the walls of this staple of Lindos. Started by the Mavrikos family in 1912, the restaurant has been in its current location since 1933. And four generations later, it is still run by the Mavrikos family. What's their secret? Fresh ingredients, cooking with love, and the warmth of Greek hospitality. The taste is exquisite. No wonder this man has 13 awards. Yes, sir. Chef! Thank okay. you so much. How it was it? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, the sepia was so tasteful. The calamari with beetroot was just delicious, and the lamb shank and the mashed potatoes was melting in my mouth. To you, Chef, congratulations. You too. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Chef, you've been here since 1933. Your family, you have a great history. Your grandfather was also a chef. Are these recipes part of the family history? Yes. Um, first of all, I have to tell you that uh, the family uh, business started in 1912. 1912. But uh, since 1933, we are in this location. Beautiful. Our grandfather, our father, and now my brother and me. And I must say, this is a traditional environment. The experience has been really Greek, and that's really great because travelers are, don't really experience sometimes the real Greek cuisine. And so you persist on keeping your recipes authentic Greek. Tell me about choosing your ingredients. How do you do it? Because I've heard you go to the fields personally and pull all those herbs by yourself. Uh, you can see my arm. <laughs> there you, you go. Know, there, the proof is it's right It's like I was here. fighting with cuts. I try to collect everything is possible by myself because I know the things when they are ripe, when they are ready to collect them and preserve them. I believe also the, the ingredients, the products of Greece make a difference. How do you feel about that? Good oil, good salt, Lindian sea salt, uh, and uh, love. And love, because I heard you singing. Everything. I heard yeah. you singing while you sometimes were cooking. I, yeah. That brings love to the food. I do it sometimes, actually many times, depends on my mood, you know, but uh, uh, okay, when I am in a, really in a nervous and things, then uh, I sing Rebetica. <laughs> When I am, uh, when I am uh, uh, more happy and more relaxed, I, I can sing um, Greek island songs. Yes. For example, uh, uh, there is a song, you know, which is, says uh, Dimitru Lamuyasu, but I will uh, make it to Yanu Lamuyasu. <laughs> Re Yanu Lamuyasu, parta ola dikasu. Join me next week as my seafaring odyssey continues and I set sail for the islands of Halki and Tilos.
traditional Greek products. Straight to your door. Yelenis.com